5B. Play like a pro at Strain Sound Studio. Hi. Mike Violette from String Sound Studios. In this live stream, we'll be talking about five concepts that John Fogarty uses to get this tune grooving. Hi, I'm Michael Violette. Once again, String Sound Studios. I'm glad you tuned in again. And the goal of my live streams is to be educational, entertaining, and exploratory on a variety of styles and topics. So uh, let's get going. And before I, we do get going, we're streaming to you from multiple platforms, YouTube, Facebook, Periscope, Twitch, and some others, some a little more obscure things. Uh, we'll talk about those another time. Please subscribe, especially to our YouTube. Hit that bell for notifications. And uh, I do have a video as well. So uh, if anyone can hear me out there, uh, let me know how everything sounds. YouTube is changing things constantly. It should be on the events now. And uh, well, so get going on that. So give me a while, let me know. And for a better experience, try switching over to YouTube. Okay. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to work on, today we're going to work on the, uh, we're going to work on that intro, that pesky little intro there, which can be very uh, tricky to pick. And I'm going to work on some grooves and things for the chords as well. So let's get going. And I was using my fingers, but now I'm going to use a pick. And when you do this, so it's very important. And one of the, let's talk about our first concept, okay? Because I mentioned five concepts. We're going to do sweep an alternative picking or hybrid picking. Well, not really hybrid, but not really using the fingers. But there's a lot of different sweeps and alternate picking. That's what I wanted to say. So you gotta be, uh, you gotta be careful with this because you wanna sweep across. So let's take a look at that first lick and I was playing it with the looper, but I'm not going to do it right now. When you first start, okay, we're gonna start on this gene. We're gonna, I set my hands up in second position and I use a combination of open strings and of course, close strings. I set my hand up in second position. And when I start, I start with an up pick. And there's a reason for that. So I could get my alternate picking going and then sweep across. So we're gonna take the first lick here and it starts on the end of three. So it's one, two, three. So you have this. So let's just get that. One, two, three. my G here on an up pick if you take a look at my right hand right I have this then I have the C I go G open A B C go G open A and my A I do as a down pick so I can get this so the picking is really important as anything do that open A This is basically a C chord now. This becomes a C chord, but it's using open strings. So I'm going to play my C, and I'm going to do all down picks here on the C. Open G. So what am I doing? I'm playing, after I play the C note, I'm playing an open, I mean an E, and then an open G. So I have this. E. Right there is the fourth string 
uh, first finger if you're in second position. Now, I would play this in second position. So you have this. Let's go all the way up to this G here on the third string from the beginning. We're doing it slow. One, two, three. And I kind of try to deaden that a little bit, uh, that third string. Let's do it again. One, two, three. So you can do a palm mute here, but I like doing it both ways. I like doing the palm mute, and I want to be able to do that way. And hey, Kelly. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sounded good. Glad you're out there. Anyone else out there? We had some people on Periscope uh, a few weeks ago. I had started some good conversation. So uh, tune in and say hi. Let's keep going, though. Let's go with the, uh, the riff. So that first riff is this. And remember, I was talking to you about doing the palm mute. Palm mute. So you could do this. You can palm and deaden the strings back here. See that? You take the side. What I do is I take the side of my hand and you gently rest it on the strings close to the bridge here. And you get this sound. Or you could play it clean, totally clean, and not palm mute, and you get, you know, get more ambience there. So one, two, three. That's my first riff. Now let's take a look at the next one. What I do after that is I play a D note. And that's kind of like the whole phrase. Remember the phrase is a musical sentence. So we have this, the open D. And what's going on here in the chords is the first chord is a G chord, except it's all based on melody. So we're playing a G chord here, right? This, that's a C chord, then he goes to a D chord, back to a G, if you were to play the chords that, right? But he doesn't. Those arpeggios are outlining the chords, in my view. It sounds like you get this D and this F sharp in there. So, all right. So let's take a look at what we have from the G again. I play that with an uptake after I do those sweeps. Watch. From the C. Sorry. Up. On the D. Down. Down on the A. So work on the picking. I, I mean, it's going to be your choice. But realize that you should be doing some sweep meaning maybe all downs, a couple down, not all downs, but a couple downs in a row, a couple ups in a row, right? You don't always have to do down, up, alternate picking, down, up, down, up. That works well for a lot of things, uh, but it doesn't work well for everything. Just like uh, sweet picking doesn't work well for everything and hybrid picking. So there's all different ways to pick. Okay? I use my fingers. If you noticed in the beginning, I was doing this. I was using my thumb. I like to be able to play everything so many different ways. And there's reasons why I start out with my using my fingers um, when I you know, do the live stream at first. So I just get, get into, I feel the guitar better. I feel closer to the guitar, okay? It's a little, uh, being using a pick is, not that uh, using your fingers is easy, but using a pick it, it can be, uh, especially with this, be a little bit nerve wracking. So once you get going, you know, you, you use the pick. I mean, that's just me, okay? Don't worry, I will start these live streams with a pick sometimes. <laughs> I mean, I often do on uh, videos. But hey, this is live, you know, so we want to we want to play as good as we can. All right, here we go. I'm going to play that whole riff all the way up to the first, uh, first phrase, okay? So let's go. One, two, three. <laughs> to me is there's a half phrase but that to me is the whole phrase so when you get to this from that D so again we have this from this D open G so I think 
the best way to practice this is do those chords. So you start out with this and you say, well, I'm going to do this uh, first riff on the C chord. So you go one, two, three. Once you get that, you do the next riff and you say, well, I'm going to work on this thing with the D. Okay? See that? Now that one's not too hard and it's on adjacent strings. And that's what we're doing is we're trying to keep that adjacent string thing. Okay? That's why I'm using combinations of open and closed strings. If you use all closed strings, it doesn't ring out. So open strings are fine. It depends on what you're doing. It depends on what you sound. And you can use adjacent strings too and you're not jumping as around as much. But it is, it is a tricky picking thing. You know, I don't take, I don't take the, I'll play, I'll try to play all kinds of music and you know, jazz, finger style, whatever. And when I do anything, you know, you might say, well, Mike, that's pretty easy for you. Well, you know, I, I try to practice these things as much as I can uh, and pr prepare them. So that's for you to uh, enjoy and so you can learn also. And I got to be able to play these things. All right, let's keep going. So, now, again, we're going to go to the second half of that phrase, all right? I'm gonna start from the B. We, we played all the way to this G here. Now watch. Not just, there's a little like G chord there, right? I have B, closed. I wanted you to be closed because why? Because I can play the D, I can play it on this adjacent string. Then up on the D. And again, go and practice this. Oops, sorry. B, D, fourth string D. Make sense? Hope that all makes sense to you. All right, I'm going to take it all the way up to there. Ready? One, two, three. Three. Mike, I made a mistake. Sorry. One, two, three. Here's my up bit. Again. One, two, three. That's kind of your first full phrase. Now let's take a look at the next one. So it starts out the same, very similar to the first one. The first half of it is, then he does something a little bit different on that D chord. And that goes like this. One, two, three. There's the difference, right? So if you take a look, I'll take it from the D, the second part of that second phrase is, G. Now A. Back to the open D. Let's take a look again. I got my open D. G. A. B. D. So you got to watch because I'm playing a lot of opens here. And open strings should be hard to follow on videos. So again, I'm going to play that whole. Uh, first, second phrase rather. Okay, one, two, three. And there you have it. Now let's put both together. Okay, and it's a good idea to try to get the score somewhere. And if you read, and you should be reading, try to get this. Uh, you know, write this out and say, okay, I'm going to down pick here and I'm going to up pick and really mold yourself into playing it that way instead of playing it differently all the time. So I'll take it from the beginning. One, two, three. And that's really slow. So remember, think G chord, think C chord, think D. All right, first riff is coming into the, like coming from a G chord, going right into the C chord, right? So you want to do that. Then C chord. That'll help you memorize. Oh, then it's a D chord. Open 
and G back to the same thing. Ending's a little different. Then he does he does something very similar to the first part. Let's let's play the uh, first two phrases again. One, two, three. Last phrase before he gets into the grooves of the tune. One, take it on the end of three again. All right. One, two, three. I play chord here, a little bit of chord. All right. It's very similar to the second, like half the first phrase and half the second. But if you watch, one, two, three. Remember, again, these phrases are very similar. There's minor adjustments to play it a little bit differently, and it's a G chord, a C chord, and a D chord. Right? That's basically what you're doing. All right, let's try, let's try the whole thing one more time, and then I'll show you the other part uh, right before the whole band kind of kicks in. All right? Ready? One, two, three. John do after that. Well, he plays, it goes to a C chord. Very simple. I would form all C chord. You play the bass note, then the E. Now this, you're going to first position. This is in second. Okay? If you want to play the C chord here in first position, just kind of drag the pick across. Because you know the sweep pick, right? Play this bass note, play an E, then maybe a full C chord, or I'm, I'm sure if you go like this, all right, you know, dress it up a little bit, you play. And he has, I'll show you that in a minute. No one's going to say, hey, you know, John plays this here. He doesn't play the E twice, you know, or the C twice. But the basic idea of it is play the bass note. Do this. My point is if you did this, or. Something like that, it's going to sound fun. The thing you want to remember when you do this, he does that upbeat coming into the next chord. The chord is a C chord in first position, and you're going to play another C bass note, which is this, on the, on the end of four with an up pick. I think it makes sense to play an up pick. Why? Because I want to do this, and then I want to do the same thing, and I want to go to this G chord. Or any minor. B, D. Harmonically, I believe it's a G chord. Yeah, the bass is a G there. So, I got a G chord with a B in the bass. But he puts the open E in there. Same type of thing. Because I don't hear any bass note on the band. I believe that's a G chord. So, remember, E minor and G are very close. You can play a G6. And it's the same thing as an E minor, uh, if you want to take a look at that and study that a little bit, okay? So we have the G6 chord, which is uh, the same thing as an E minor 7. Let me correct myself, all right? And that goes for one major 6 chord in an A key is the same as its 6, respective placement of 6 in the progression, 6 uh, minor 7th chord. So G6, E minor 7, okay? If you're playing an A6 chord, is it the same as an F sharp minor 7 chord? Okay. All right, let's try that again. So you have this, a C chord. Then you 
go, you play the upbeat on the C as I mentioned, so watch. C. Four. Then we get into some dynamics. And that's another concept, okay? It's not a major concept of this song, but it kind of builds up after that. So you get the... Dynamics, the degrees and volume in which music is played. So you want to try to use those in whatever style or genre you're playing. Try to get some dynamics in there. They create a lot of excitement, and uh, and uh, you should do them in any, like I said, any genre. So. All right. So again, you have this C chord. Do an up pick on the C. to this here where he plays this B and A chord, uh, D and A note. And that would be, that's like a D, that's a G chord. He's playing the open A along with the D. And it's a D chord down. Or, so let's take a look at that whole intro. There's a lot just to the intro of this. So we've been going 20 minutes just on the whole intro again. And then I'll try it with the looper. So, but I'm going to do it slow for you. All right? One, two, three. I might do a lesson on this on those riffs. I don't believe I'll do that next uh, next week, but somewhere down the line. So today we're doing intro and generally sticking with the intro and the chords. So, hey, who's that? <laughs> it's a very nice lady, and I hope she's healthy. Okay. Hey, how how are you? I don't know who that is. Could be my wife. <laughs> All right, whoever you are, say saying hi. <laughs> It's always fun doing these. Uh, a few weeks ago, I had a lot of a lot of people, I had three or four people asking me questions. You get a little away sometimes to what you're doing. Hi, nice lady, um, whoever you are. All right, anyway, let's let's continue. So we talked about sweep and alternate picking. We talked about the use of dynamics. All right, and now we're going to talk about some interesting grooves you can do over the chord changes. Uh, and what happens is. It's basically a one, that's something else. It's another concept. It's a one, four, five progression with a six chord and a two. So you have that E, I believe it's an E minor chord. But we're playing E root and fifth. So just keep it simple. I'm keeping it simple here for you. Okay? And I want to talk about some rock grooves, which do they really do it? No, but you can in the song to make it a little more interesting. Right? So let's go, let's go over to some of the chords. So we played the intro. Now, we're going to play the G, the G chord in the intro. He's going. That's one of them. That is your, your four bars of that. Then the verse comes in. Right? But we want to get this thing going here. Now, let me stop. Let me talk about that. Okay. Now we're getting in, the whole band's kicking in, and it's right before the verse. And what am I doing here? Well, I'm playing one, and I'm playing three. And it's very popular. It's the Johnny B. Good thing. It's very popular in rock and roll. But the way you want to do that, okay, because your hands might not, you know, might not be able to do that right away. Right? So you're going to have to work this way. What I tell people when they're doing that, especially when they're, they're uh, down here on the fretboard, what I tell people is, I tell them to pull their arm in more. Don't try to do this. Look at my, look at my arm position like this. You're going to kill your hands. Pull your arm in so you can reach this. So you have the root here, which is this. That's the root of the chord. That's a G. And we have what we call a fifth of the chord, meaning a G chord. G, A, B, C, D is a fifth. Right? 
So we have just a root and fifth chord, and we have a big bar chord of this. I'm doing this. And now, what happens here is we're going to play the sixth of the chord. So it's going to be going G to G6. And that's on the same string. Look, this is my fifth, right? One, two, three, four, five in the scale. That's my sixth. We're going to get these just these two strings going, outside chord, because the root is on the outside. So we're going to get these two chords going. I mean, yeah, these two notes, and we're going to just play those, those two notes with the pick. Now, how are you going to pick that? Well, on things like this, I tend to do a lot of down, up, alternate picking. Because then it gets, too, it gets too forced if you're trying to do all down. I see people go, well, you got to bring the pick back up anyway, so this is very useful here. Here you go with your, your alternate pick. Yeah. So you got your alternate picking going, and that, and you can use a little more wrist, not so much elbow, so it's not so heavy. And you can do a palm mute too. So there's a lot of things you can do. But first, try to use a little more wrist in here, and not so much elbow. Okay. Um, let's take a look. So I have this. So I go one and two and three and one. And these are eighth notes, right? four bars of G like that then the verse comes in he has two more bars of G then he goes to the C one bar so we take it from after the intro it sounds like this verse all right now he's gonna have two more bars of G Move inside. Now let's take a look at what I did. So I just take my first finger and my third finger and I move it inside. Meaning the six, I'm not playing the six string here, that's an outside. This is an outside string and that's an outside string. I am playing, okay, I'm playing inside, I'm playing the fifth string and the fourth string. Same shape. Move those shapes up. So we have this. Same thing. I'm playing that six. So I have on the same string here. There you go. Got that? Remember, pull that arm in. All right? We don't want this. We want this when we're doing it. So let's take a look from my verse. I have two bars of G. to the C, back to the G, up to the E, you chorus and that we're going to do that in a moment which is really the same it's really just a G C and eventually a G chord he puts this right in right. well let's let's take it I'll play the whole thing with the looper up to there remember I'm not doing anything crazy I'm getting this going yeah leave it off leave it off the E okay so when you go to that E chord just a Chords first before you start adding in some reps, okay? So now, let me play all the way up to the chorus with the looper.
at that point, that's when your chorus comes in. So let's go over your chorus. So your chorus is basically a G chord again. You can continue this. That's where the claps come in, that break. Ta, 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 on the C chord. So if you're in the chorus, put me in, coach. Da, 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 today. Now, basically the drums and the other instruments don't do that. So you could try to cut that on the guitar as well, depending on, you know, play along with the uh, CD, the uh, what are they, recording, the electronic, <laughs> I used to say the album, <laughs> showing my age here, all right? We have, we have that much of the chorus, and that's where your claps come in. And then he goes back to the G uh, for a few bars, and then he's gonna do this. <laughs> That's like the whole song, okay? So, up, oh, Ligo A Musica. Ligo. Who's that now? Hello, how are you? Let's take let's take a look at the chorus. Ready? So we have this here. I'm gonna play the chorus here, ready? One, two, three, four. Then it's the other verse. So the, it's pretty much straightforward, the song, a lot of G, C, and D chords. And that's kind of the form of it. It's going to do another verse and another chorus. So it kind of goes on and on like that. But let's, let's, take, the, uh, let's take the whole thing um, one more time. And I hope I played the intro uh, <laughs> the correct way. I, t I tend to change things. All right, ready? Not when I was teaching you too much. John Fogarty's chords and rhythms of center field. And I talked about the fifth concept. I'm not sure if I mentioned it because I was talking a lot about strumming correctly and getting a good tone. So that was the fifth concept. So if we review, we have sweep and alternate picking in here. You had some interesting grooves, right? We talked about that, right? getting chord changes. It was a one, four, five progression, meaning if you're in the key of G, G, just think of a G scale, right? G, A, B, C is the four chord, D is the five, and you have that sixth in there, you have that E chord, okay? Uh, and of course we use dynamics, meaning the degrees and volume at which music is played, and strumming correctly and getting a good tone. So I talked about that, using your wrist, down up, let's get a good tone, we don't wanna be weak, we wanna hold the pick firm, uh, let me just talk about that, how you get a good tone on the guitar. I use medium to heavy picks. These are these are jazz threes, the red ones. I use jazz threes. I use the red ones. I use the black ones. There, there's different type picks, but I tend to use a smaller pick. That's me. And I use what we call a Johnny Smith style picking. Where am I going here? My thing's in the way. And what I do is I hold it like this. So if you take a look, okay, the way I'm holding the pick is you 
we make a fist, let's go like this, we make a fist, and I take the pick and I put it in here like that, okay? You can see that. And I'm holding it with this part of my finger, all right? Well, the pressure is coming from here, obviously. I'm holding it from the thumbprint part. And I don't make I don't make so much a fist, it's more like a half fist. So to get all the view on that, I do this, okay? And it's like that, like that. And what I do, if you notice, is I fan my hand out sometimes, but I'm still holding the pick like this, okay? When I go single note, I tend to hold the pick more like this. And then when I'm doing chords, I tend to do this. And I do combinations of both depending on what I'm doing because I still want to get a good tone. When you're on a single string, you want to get a good tone. All right, and you you know want that note to ring out, and it doesn't flop around. If you take a look, I'm holding a good, you know, a good 75% or more of that pick. So you want to hold it like that, and it's a good way to get going. We talked about this in previous lessons, and I have a you know pure beginning guitar course that emphasizes all simple things like this. If you're just starting out on the guitar. You can buy that course on my website, stringsoundstudios.com. All right, so again, let's uh, we'll review again. We had sweep and alternate picking. We had interesting grooves you can play over the chord changes. You had one, four, five with a six chord in it. Use of dynamics and strumming and getting a good tone. And that goes for a lot of tunes, not just, oh, this song. And this is a tricky thing to play. You know, I, had, I had to practice this a uh, decent amount to get those uh, that bopping around with your right hand. Let's face it, everyone, so, you, you know, you're fretting, well, in my right case, right hand. Your fretting hand adapts. It's this hand that you lose if you're not practicing. So this is the tough one, your picking hand. It's like a bow to a cello or a violin. And uh, Kelly can tell you that there. She's a cello. So you really got to work on your bowing technique. And uh, that's the whole essence of playing you know, bass, guitar, and, you know, with a bow, violin. Got to have a good bow. Same thing here. Whether you're playing pick. You play finger style, you really got to get whatever you're picking with, you really got to be aware because that's going to make the sound of the string. So don't say, oh, look at mm -hmm. this guy's left hand, and my hand, left hand moves good. You got to make it sound good. Okay? Uh, so I guess your homework is to work on all these things and listen to different musicians. Okay? Uh, you know, I could give you a whole bunch of different musicians to listen to. Find your own way. Listen to, listen to a lot of uh, John Fogarty. You know, since we're having a lesson on that. All right. Okay, and uh, join me for next week. Uh, I'm not going to tell you what I'm going to do because I'm not quite sure. And I said one day I'm going to do the fills on this, but it was enough in one lesson just to do the intro and just to do the chorus. And uh, sign up for my Play Like a Pro video courses at stringsoundstudios.com. We have the Pure Beginning Guitar Course, Pure uh, Beginning Blues Guitar Course. We also have a uh, ukulele course, uh, the Midway Blues Guitar Course. So there's a lot of uh, good things on there, and I will continue to do more videos. Of course, that, these are free. Of course, that you have to uh, pay for, but they're very inexpensive, and you get scores, you get backing tracks, You my, my hand, you know, we put a thing in the corner there, or look, where my hand, my left hand, uh, you know, you get a close up of that along with me like this. I can't do that on the live stream here, but hopefully uh, everything's clear and you can see it pretty well. And uh, to sign up for that, send me feedback on String Sound Studios website right here in the chat box also, and let me know what you would like me to do. All right, and uh, let's, we'll have a good day. Remember to uh, play like a pro at String Sound Studios. We'll see you next week. I'm planning on doing this Friday. We'll let you know, Find the ca uh, check out the calendar at stringsoundstudios.com for uh, exactly when I'm doing this. And I'm not gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. What you, I'm gonna do a classic rock though. Remember, we're doing different genres here. So I'm doing jazz, I'm doing blues, I'm doing, and they're all gonna be in playlists, all right? And this is the classic rock corner, which I'm working on classic rock tunes, but I'm gonna do a classic rock tune. I just don't know what. And sometimes I'm gonna break these up because they get, you know, kind of long to do. If you want to do the verse, the chorus, some of the riffs, so it might be a good idea to break. Uh, I think I have in mind what I want to do next, and I might break that up and start. You know, you don't necessarily have to start with uh, intros and things. You can start on a verse, uh, especially the one I'm thinking about. It's probably easier to start on the verse. Well, I know it is because I teach it to people, and I do quite a bit of teaching. All right, hope you enjoyed this. 
And uh, let's uh, let's see you again next week. Should be 5.30. We'll let you know. And remember, play like a pro at String Sound Studios. And my mouse is going crazy. Hey, come on, huh? Play it again. Play see you later. Have a good day. At String Sound Studios.